Chapter 5, in which the plot thickens. Fiddlesticks halted just in front of Morwen's feet. The man he was carrying kicked, then tried to punch backward and overhead at the cat's nose. <clears throat> Fortunately, he missed. Fiddlesticks growled and shook his head, and the man shrieked as he swung back and forth. How interesting, Telemaine said. Morwen, your cat appears to have captured a miniature wizard. So I see, Morwen said. What did you do with his staff? <laughs> said Fiddlesticks and jabbed his tail back toward the bush. Good, don't let him anywhere near it. Morwen turned and started for the clover patch. Where are you going? Mor Telemaine said. To get the bucket, Morwen called over her shoulder. There was another high-pitched shriek from within the wizard, from the wizard and a jumbled protest from Telemaine, both of which she ignored. Having collected her bucket, she returned to find the wizard on his feet with Fiddlesticks standing guard. Telemaine sat cross-legged in front of them, holding something that looked like a silver watch with an orange dial and four hands. He kept looking from the watch to the wizard and back. Has he told you what they're up to yet? Morwen said, setting the bucket down a little to one side, where it would be handy, but out of the immediate way. Telemaine looked up, frowning. I haven't asked. Do you realize that this is the first opportunity I have had to observe a wizard in situ? Of course, the magical connections would be clearer if his staff were a little closer. You leave that staff where it is, Morwen said. Fiddle, if either of them tries to go get it, stop them. I don't care how. You don't? That's easy, then. Fiddlesticks curled his lips back, showing most of his teeth. Did I do good? Does that, this mean I can have fish for dinner? It certainly does, Morwen said. And possibly a bowl of cream as well. Where's Scorn? With Jasper watching the staff, do they get fish too? Yes, if they want it. Morwen transferred her attention to the six-inch wizard. He had a sharp, angular face, half covered with an untidy brown beard, and he seemed a little young compared to most of the wizards Morwen had met not to mention short. If it won't interfere with your observations, Telemaine, I'd like to ask this fellow a few questions. Hmm? Oh, not at all. Telemaine did not even glance up. Good. Now, wizard, who are you and what are you doing in the Enchanted Forest? The wizard drew himself up to his full height, which brought his head about even with Fiddlestick's nose. I am Antarell, and if you know what is good for you, you will not meddle with me, he said in a shrill voice. I might have known, Morwen said. What's that? Telemaine said, looking up. Morwen, these readings are absurd. This fellow can't be very good. Antarell's face turned bright red. Morwen smiled. He isn't. This is Antarell, Telemaine. Antarell, Antarell. Oh, the son of head wizard Zeminar? That's right, Antarell said, and you'll regret. Isn't he the one Simmering keeps melting? Telemaine said. And shouldn't he be larger? Antarell's face became downright purple. Curious about the change, Fiddlesticks leaned forward, and his whiskers brushed the side of Antarell's head. The wizard shrieked and jumped away. The cat pounced, and bits of moss flew in all directions. After a moment, the rapidly moving tangle resolved into Fiddlesticks crouched over the wizard. One front paw, with claws fully extended, rested on each of Antarell's shoulders. Antarell looked terrified. He's the one, Morwen said to Telemaine. Very good, Fiddle. You may back up now. I don't think he'll do that again. Fascinating, Telemaine murmured, his eyes fixed on the cat. Did you see the sparks, Morwen? He cast a basic warding off spell, but it didn't affect the cat at all. Morwen frowned in concern. Fiddlesticks? Well, of course it didn't do anything to me. Fiddlesticks eased slowly off Antarell's chest and sat down very close beside him. Wizards don't know how to handle cats. I don't think they're very smart. Get that beast away from me, Antarell cried as Fiddlesticks raised a paw and flexed his claws. See, said Fiddlesticks, and began washing wizard germs out from between his toes. Calm down, Morwen told Antarell. Fiddlesticks won't hurt you, unless I tell him to, of course. What are you doing in the enchanted forest? I won't tell you, Antarell was plainly trying to sound defiant, but all he managed was sulky. Morwen, Scorn wound her way around the far edge of the bush. How long are you going to have to, are we going to have to watch this staff? It's not doing anything, and Jasper wants to take a nap. I'll be there as soon as we finish with Antarell, Morwen said. What is it? Telemaine asked. Scorn wants the staff taken care of, Morwen told him. Antarell? That presents no difficulty, Telemaine said. If you'll just fetch it here, Scorn, I'll do it for you. Scorn gave him a long look. Dogs, fetch. She turned her back and lay down, her tail thrashing indignantly. That means no, I take it, Telemaine said with a sigh. It does, and I told you I didn't want the staff anywhere near the wizard, Morwen said. A proper spirit of scientific investigation. I am more interested in self-preservation. Study the staff later. Antarell, ha, said Antarell, you are too late. Behold. 
and with a flourish he raised his right arm. As he did, he began to glow. Fiddlesticks pulled his head back in surprise, and the glow began pulsing, first bright, then dim. After three pulses, Antarell started growing. He gained an inch on the next pulse, two on the one after that, and then he had grown to a foot in height. Bother, said Morwen, and grabbed for the bucket. Argo Fraster, said Telamine, and pointed at Antarell. Yeah, said Antarell, his expression changing from sinister to shocked. He continued to glow and pulse, but he was no longer getting taller. A puddle of brown goo began to spread out from under his robe where his feet should have been. No, help, you can't do this to me. Wow, said Fiddlesex, look at him go. Morwen nodded, but she kept the bucket of soapy water ready to throw, just in case. Antarell was now melting faster than he was growing. In another minute, all that was left were his robes and the puddle of goo sinking slowly into the moss. Fiddlesticks edged up to, to it and sniffed, then backed away, very, very, uh, backed away rapidly. What was all that noise? Killer said from behind Telamine. Part of it sounded like another donkey. No, it was a wizard, though in this case it's much the same thing, Morwen said. You needn't worry. He's gone now. She set her bucket down once more and gave Telamine a nod of approval. Congratulations, it works. Yes, and did you notice the echo effect on the size amplification spell? Telamine shook his head. Remarkable. The theoretical ramifications are very interesting, I'm sure, Morwen said. How permanent is this? She waved at the gooey robes. Not very, I'm afraid, Telamine said. He'll be back in a day or two. Killer ambled over to the puddle. Is this edible? He asked in a doubtful tone. No, said Morwen and Telamine together. What an awful idea, said Fiddlesticks, wrinkling his nose. What a mess, said Scorn. Don't touch it, Morwen said to Killer. With two spells on you already, you shouldn't take any chances with, with the wizard residium. Oh, said Killer. He looked at the puddle again and sighed. But I'm hungry and thirsty. What do donkeys eat? We'll take care of you in a minute or two, Morwen promised. Finish up quickly, Telamane. We're leaving. Beach or no beach, King Mendenbar and Queen Simmerine had to be found and informed as soon as possible. Morwen started back toward the clover patch to collect her broomstick. Don't forget about that staff, Scorn called after her. Getting ready to leave didn't take long. Morwen picked up the staff and Jasper, who was still guarding it, on her way back to Telamane. She noticed with interest that the staff was over three feet long and expanding slowly. Apparently, the shrinking spell was wearing off it, even without Antarell's help. When she reached him, Telamine was just stowing the last of his shiny instruments back in one of his pockets. Have we got everyone? The magician asked. Everyone but the wizard, Scorn said. And good riddance to him, I say. Yes, Morwen replied to both Telamine and Scorn. If you'll take the staff, Telamine. I wouldn't do that, Jasper said, jumping down from Morwen's shoulder. Morwen paused, frowning, then saw Killer standing by the bucket of soapy water. He lowered his head and sniffed experimentally. Why not? It smells nice. That's the lemon juice, Morwen said. It's got soap in it, Fiddlestick said, lashing his tail. It's for melting wizards. There aren't any wizards around, and I'm thirsty. Before anyone could stop him, Killer took a large slurp. His ears stood straight up, and he reared back, shaking his head. Bleh! That tastes terrible. Fiddle warned you, said Scorn, with a visible lack of sympathy. So did Jasper. Serves you right for not listening. What's it doing to his nose? Fiddlestick said, poking his own nose forward until he had to stand up and follow it. Look at his nose, Morwen. It's turning blue. Not just the nose, Jasper stared in fascination. His whole face is changing color. Killer gave a frightened snort and shook his head, sneezing bubbles, no, soap bubbles in all directions. The color went on spreading. Soon his head and neck were a bright, clear sky blue. They continued to inch up his ears, down his forelegs, and across his back. Help, Killer cried. Morwen, you're a witch. Make it stop. That would be inadvisable, Telamane said. He, too, was watching Killer's changing color with great interest. The synergistic action of the original wizardly enchantment, which was itself an unstructured mechanical surplus and therefore for liable to produce unpredictable side effects, and the secondary vegetation-based enchantment has rendered you vulnerable to the wizard liquefaction fluid while also fortunately mitigating its effects. What? said Keller. You've got a leftover bit of a wizard spell on you, and you don't know where what all it may do. You're lucky you aren't melting the way the wizard did, Scorn summarized. But just look at me. I think it's an improvement, Morwen said, much better than being blotchy. Blue? Blue is better than blotchy? The color had spread to Killer's hindquarters. Only his tail and his back legs were still a, a patchy white and brown. Not much, said Scorn. Settle it later, Morwen said. We have to go, Telamine. 
Everyone still here? Good. Telemann raised a hand and made a circle in the air with his left forefinger. The wide silver band on his finger sparkled, as he said in a low, in a low voice, Convey this crowd on wind and cloud to the castle of the king by the power of this ring. On the last word, Telemann clapped his hand together loudly. The trees melted and ran like soft wax on a hot stove. To her surprise, Morwen felt no sensation of movement. It was more as if she were standing still while everyone around, everything around her shifted. As she nodded in approval, the blur flowed into a new shape and solidified. They now stood on the paving stones of the castle courtyard in the relatively narrow strip between the moat and the main door. A large ra dragon lay along the left side of the castle, basking in the sun. Her head, with the three stubby horns that proclaimed her a female, rested at the edge of the moat. Most of her body was hidden by a tower, with two staircases running around its, its outside. Her wings were partway open to catch the sun, and her green scales glittered, even where they were being turned to gray, were they, even where they were beginning to turn gray at the edges. Yeah, killer brayed in terror. A dragon! Oh, good, Morwen said at the same moment. That will save some time. Good? Killer seemed to be trying to hide behind Telemane and to watch the dragon at the same time. A dragon is good? Not a dragon, you idiot, said Scorn. That's Kazul, the king of the dragons. Killer edged away. Does he eat rabbits or donkeys? She prefers Cherry's Jubilee, Jasper said. She? Killer looked thoroughly confused, as well as alarmed. But the King of the Dragons? King of the Dragons is the name of a job, Jasper said. It has nothing to do with gender. Dragons are very sensible about things like that, Fiddlestix put in, nodding. Almost as sensible as me. But they don't like fish. I'd be happier if they didn't like donkeys. Don't worry about King Kazul, Morwen said to Killer. She doesn't eat friends or friends. Not even if she's hungry. Killer's ears pricked forward nervously. She looks hungry to me. Before Morwen could respond, the castle door creaked open. From the dark hallway inside, a voice called, Madame Morwen, Magician Telemane, welcome to the castle. <laughs>